Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now we're going to try something a little different in this review. I'm going to try and do it a bit quicker because testing these things does take ages. But then also what does take ages is making all the graphs, and doing all the write-ups and all this loads going on that needs to be done before we can even get to click and record on a camera. So we're going to try and do this one a little bit quicker. So the reason why I'm telling you at the beginning is for all the regulars, I'd actually genuinely like your feedback. So the uh, video today is about the Powercolor RX570. So we know recently that um, AMD refreshed the 570, 580s, basically the old 400 series cards. Well, essentially what that means in the background is they're now being made by Samsung. So that's the reason why there's been a little bit of a change and there's been a slight core increase. So there's been lots of stuff going on, but it's meant that the manufacturers can all um, uh, hurry around and try and update all the cards. Now the uh, Power Color Red Devil 570, that is here, this actually comes with a 1320 megahertz base clock. Now the price it's coming in at is 188 pounds and that's taken for today, the time of uh, filming the video, from overclockers. Now why that makes this interesting, and the reason why we're just doing a quick video is, it was one of the ones where I was thinking to myself, well, that's actually cheaper than some of the lower end 480s. This has quite a beefy clock, and could it kind of match out? Now anyway, with this cooler, that from Power Color, when that was on the old 480 model, it couldn't quite keep up with the heat. Now we know with the, um, the 500 series range, they're still pulling the same amount of power, they're still putting out the same sort of amount of heat because essentially there's nothing really that's gone on underneath the, the hood other than the fact that they're now running a little bit quicker. But the thing is with the 570 is it's got a slight core count less, so it's got a couple of less clusters. And so what I ended up doing uh, is I put this on an absolute torture test with Unigen overnight before I did my, uh, my actual benchmarking to work out what was going on. So essentially, I found out that it has a 75 degree power target. So it didn't go above 75 degrees, but at the same time, it didn't really make any noise either. Don't get me wrong, the fans were spinning. 1800 RPM was the maximum uh, fan speed that I got from the card. Now with the other case fans that were going on in the, you know, in the case, I couldn't really hear them. And the, when I did test this as the 480 version, I could hear it. Now, I don't know whether the cooler is exactly the same, but to be fair, we've got three fans going on. There's a single eight pin going on there. And it's quite a long card. The PCB actually stops just after the eight pin. So you've got all this extra here. And to put it into context for you, I've got the 580 version here. And if I was to put it up, you can see it quite clearly hangs over the end. So it's, it's quite a big card. Just gonna try and hold them together without scratching all the back plates and stuff. So it's quite a big card and I'm doing a terrible job, I know. But anyway, so it's much longer than the 580. To be honest with you, it's almost like they're the wrong way round. But um, it's with the 570 core, or the old 470 core with a big overclock on it, it's actually done really well. Now, um, uh, when it comes down to performance, the best way I can say it's if you were to be thinking about, do I get a cheap 480 or a tasty um, uh, 570, then there's uh, this can actually be quicker than one of the original low clock, sort of around the 1100, 1150 megahertz 480s. And the price difference that those 480s, and I was looking on overclockers, can still be between 30 and 50 pounds more expensive than the, the 570. So you do end up weirdly being able to save a bit of money and still getting uh, very good performance. So weirdly what this video was about was Power Color 570 or old basic 480, if you were looking at those as a possibility of a purchase, I'd say probably go with this one. Um, well, go with a 570. So really what I intended on doing with this video was testing this and I was uh, expecting it to be not very good because I didn't particularly like the cooler the last time around. And annoyingly, it's kind of won me over on the 570. So I understand why Powercolor kept this one, 
and obviously it's going to have helped them keep prices down and stuff like that. So I understand why they've kept this one and they've only used the big beefy one on the, the 580. So all in all, you get slightly better than basic 480 performance out of the uh, 570 from Power Color because it does have that enormous um, overclock, 1320 megahertz. But obviously with Polaris stuff, the most important thing to keep an eye on is your average. Don't forget on uh, GPU-Z, you can click on GPU-Z, uh, go to the sensors tab, tap the uh, core clock, and you'll see it will go min, max, and then average. And that's the average clock that we need to uh, keep an eye on. And amazingly, with the Unigine loop going round for an hour, the average was 1300 megahertz, well 1301 if you want to argue over the, the one megahertz. So only dropped by 20 megahertz. Now with some of the old 480s and stuff like that, uh, if it was at 1300, I wouldn't have blinked if it was at like 1200 and or even 1150, depending on the power target. Now I didn't bother trying to overclock it or anything like that because you've obviously got the silicon lottery and mine might be uh, slightly better than yours. Uh, but the you do have a, a silent mode here and if you flick that the core clock drops a little bit and it will let the card run a bit warmer but it stays quite quiet. To be honest with you, I don't think that you really need to bother with it because I didn't think it was very loud at all. So uh, the long and short of it is being very quick, not chatting about graphs, not doing anything like that, trying something new, I would give it the gamer's choice. If you're on a budget, it's, um, uh, it's a flipping, I nearly said a uh, different word, it's a flipping good card. The, uh, it can, it is big though, but the, the, the good thing behind that is uh, it will hang over the end of an ATX motherboard, so you need to go careful if you've not got a lot of space. But when it's face down in your case like that, where it is so big, if your mates were to come around or you post pictures up on your favorite forums, like OC3D for example, I would say it looks more expensive than what it is. So there's lots of good positives and uh, things to kind of consider. It's also, because it's um, all metal, if you wanted to get yourself a little bit of a project at the weekend, you could easily whip that off, including the back plate, because it has got a nice back plate on it as well, full length down the card. It would be something that you could do quite easily as a weekend project. But anyway, I've whizzed through it. I've tried to do it as quickly as I possibly can do, not bore you with stuff that some people don't moan about. And it may mean that you end up getting more videos if you guys end up watching this video. But tell me what you think underneath. Yes, they did just knock over and the, uh, the, the camera light is um, swinging as well. But anyway, yes, I am gone. Let me know what you think. Gamer's Choice Award.